Hey, there's like a lot of things happening right now. They changed the layout of here. And uh, my things keep disconnecting. Um, <clears throat> whatever. Hi. So I haven't done, like, uh, I missed this Tuesday and last Tuesday to live stream. So far off. Um, I have no excuse except that um, sometimes it's so hard to, like, properly focus on so many multiple things at once. And I just, like, it takes more energy and time, like, preparation than you might think to to do this. Or not preparation. It's, like, it's hard to explain. It doesn't matter. We're going to talk about... Um, we're going to talk about, uh, what are we talking about? Oh yeah. Uh, losing fat and gaining muscle. So this is called body recomposition and it's kind of like the mythical unicorn, right? Because most people want more muscle and most people want less fat. However, um, as you know, if you, you know, are online friends with any sort of like people who go to the gym a lot or, who lift weights, or if you're, you know, if you do it yourself, you hear all the time about like um, bulking and cutting, right? You've probably heard you heard this. I've heard my boyfriend say, you know, bulking and cutting. So, um, <clears throat> so this is like a more typical thing than actually trying to do both at the same time. And or, uh, in other words, gain lean mass, lose body fat. The reason why is because typically. Gaining lean mass requires a caloric surplus. And of course, losing body fat requires a caloric deficit. What do you do? Can you do both at the same time? You can. And I know that I talked about this in my last live stream, but that was the one where my daughter was like all over me and like got mad, got upset and started screaming. And anyway, I'm redoing it. So also I've learned more about it since then. So basically like, why is this here? Why going? Um, so basically, uh, the thing is that you can do it if you belong to one of four major populations, four groups. I'll tell you what those groups are, but I will tell you, even if you're not in one of those groups, you can still probably do it. It's just going to be a much longer, slower process. After I tell you about these four groups, then I'm going to tell you, um, how you could probably do it. And I'm going to tell you, um, why you should do that instead of maybe lose body fat in a different way. And I'm also going to tell you, um, wait, I wrote down, oh yeah. I'm also going to tell you, I think, I think I wrote this down. Oh yeah. Um, uh, I'm also going to talk to you about reverse dieting. What is reverse dieting? We're going to talk about that at the end. So number thing, number one, uh, four groups of people that can, uh, Recomp. <laughs> um, so number one would be newbie lifters. So if you are new to lifting like I am, then uh, it's just really common to gain muscle really quickly uh, and to just kind of lose fat. And the reason is your body is like, oh my God, it's a new thing. I'm going to do this thing. Okay. Um, if you are already like an intermediate or advanced lifter and you're nearing your genetic potential, then I'm going to put this here. Uh, he would know, by the way. Uh, if you're already nearing your genetic potential, then it's going to be more difficult. You're going to put a muscle at a much slower rate. Um, but if you're new, your body is very excited to build muscle and it's going to really just get all in that because you still have a long way to go. You see what I mean? To your genetic potential. If you're already just about maxed out and you're like ripped or whatever, then you don't have a lot more that you can do. But if you still have a lot more muscle that you can build, your body's going to soak up a lot of energy to do that is the easiest way to describe it. Um, so if you're new to lifting, you're going to build muscle quite quickly. I've heard different things and I've looked at different studies and it also depends a lot on you as the individual because different people are can gain at different speeds. And, you know, I've read that women can only gain like a pound of muscle a month. 
out. I've also read that women can gain up to four pounds a month. That sounds more likely, especially if you're an easy gainer like I am. Being able to gain easily is finally coming in handy for me because I'm gaining muscle instead of fat. So crazy things are happening. Like I have abs. It's so weird. Like they're still under like a fat layer. But if I flex, oh my God, like, oh my God. Oh my God. I was, I've been looking in the mirror. Even I was looking and even my daughter who's four was like, mom, what is that? And I was like, it's muscle. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, if you're new to lifting, you, you will quite possibly, especially if you have excess body fat, you will lose that fat and you will gain some muscle. Even if you really don't go into a, a serious caloric deficit, you shouldn't. And we'll talk about that more in a few minutes when we talk about how to do this. Uh, group number two is if you're overweight or obese, if you're a fat person, then you're going to uh, lose fat and gain muscle. Uh, now this implied, by the way, go, it should go without saying for all of these groups, you're not going to gain muscle if you're not lifting heavy, if, you, if you're not running a strength program. And I don't just mean going to the gym and being like, I'll do this machine today. I'll do that machine today. If you're on a serious like strength program where you're running a linear progression, um, and you're using progressive overload that you, you need to be doing that in order to build muscle. Otherwise, like, like I, I should probably preface that in the beginning, but if you're just like going for a run, if you're training for a marathon, you're not going to build muscle. If you're training, you know, if you're like getting on the Peloton or like doing, you know, like some Pilates, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a, an actual strength program. If you're running that, that's what we're talking about here. So, um, fat people, you are going to, be able to recomp, you'll be able to lose uh, fat and gain muscle. Now, if you fit into both of those categories, if you are, have excess body fat and you're a noob lifter, congrats. You have like, you've done it, bro. Um, you're going to, you're going to recomp probably quite easily if you're doing the right things, which we'll talk about next. Number three would be like D trainees. In other words, returning lifters. If you've been out of the gym for a long time, but you were already conditioned at one point and trained but now you've got like some layers of flab and your muscles have started to go soft, you will probably be able to recomp, although quite possibly not uh, for as long or as easily as the first two categories. And number four would be people taking anabolic steroids. Uh, and I don't know what to tell you. You're just taking steroids. We're not really going to talk about that, but you'll be able to recomp if you're doing that. So um, let's talk about how to do it. So it can be like a pretty delicate balance, right? Because on the one hand, you are trying to lose fat. So you do need to be in an energy deficit, but you have to do it a certain way. If you're trying to gain muscle, the way that you might um, lose body fat, if you are sedentary and not trying to build muscle is different because in that case, you, um, if you're not, if you don't have any muscle mass and all you care about is losing body fat, um, then you can do it however old way you want to run a deficit. You can fast. You can fast for 30 days. You can fast for three days at a time. You can do intermittent fasting. You can cut all your carbs. The problem with that for muscle is it's not optimal for muscle building. So, and then of course, if you decide to do it the sedentary way, the problem with that is eventually you're going to have a really hard time keeping that weight off because you don't have any muscle. That's that you're going to just run into super hard time keeping body fat off if you don't have a good amount of active skeletal muscle. Because skeletal muscle, um, it sensitizes you to insulin. It soaks up glucose. So the only way to really like keep insulin low and burn body fat if you're sedentary is to do stuff like fasting and keto that's really, that's really extreme. Um, if you, um, however, that's really not ideal, right? Because eventually you're just not going to be able to keep it up. What's going to happen is you're going to run into what's called sarcopenia, which is muscle loss. You won't run into it for a long time if you're very obese. If you're very obese, then you can probably lose a hundred pounds or whatever without running into, if you're a hundred pounds overweight, let's say, let's say that you're a guy and you're six feet tall and you weigh like, I don't know, 350 pounds. Well, you could probably lose a hundred pounds and not run into any muscle loss. Um, however, however, 
I guess we'll talk about cardio in a minute since somebody's just piping in in the middle of it. Um, the problem is that uh, eventually you will if you just keep doing it that way. So you need to be actively building and trying to retain muscle. Uh, so let's talk about how to do that. Let's talk about, okay, if you're like, all right, I'm fit in one of these categories and I want to recomp, or I don't fit into one of these categories and I want to recomp. I want to lose body fat. I want to gain muscle. How do you do it? So there's like, there's the caloric deficit, but you have to do it in a certain way because you are going to need to think about two things. And one is um, fueling your workout. Okay. And number two is fueling muscle protein synthesis. So your performance is going to be shit if you try to get your carbs really, really low. Um, Yes, I've done it. Yes, I've tried it. And yes, you will meet people who are like just getting crazy ass gains on keto. And they'll be like, see, anybody can do this. But the truth is that two things. Number one, those people are outliers. And number two, those crazy, those people who get crazy gains on keto would probably be getting crazier gains if they weren't in ketosis. And it has to do with the way that the body creates energy in these brief, intense um, surges of activity that you have when you're lifting heavy. Your body goes through like three basic ways of recharging ATP, which is the energy currency of the body. And the first one is the adenosine triphosphate, the ATP phosphocreatine cycle. And that is a an incredibly short like chunk where you like use up what ATP you have, and then you run into the glycolytic pathway. And for that, you're going to need. I'm actually I'm gonna stop talking, okay? Because I was just, I was just reading in my precision nutrition textbook about why you shouldn't talk about this shit when you're just trying to explain nutrition to people because not everybody nerds out about this like I do. Doesn't matter. All of that. I forget I said all of that shit. Um, I'm not going to talk about oxidative phosphorylation, even though it excites me. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is if you're trying to lift heavy to gain muscle, why the fuck not eat carbs? Why not? You're going to do better. You're going to feel better. You're going to have, you're just going to perform better. You're going to be able to lift heavier weights and you're going to get stronger faster. So I don't see a reason not to do it because you're building muscle and muscle is going to help sensitize you to insulin and muscle is going to get recharged with glycogen and you don't need to be in ketosis. If you are a great big fat person and you are determined to sit on the couch and lose weight, do keto. I mean, fuck any bacon. But if you are trying to build muscle, my experience has been, I need those carbs to do what I'm doing right now. When I'm grinding out the last couple of reps of my third work set, I tried to do it uh, in ketosis one day and I missed my last couple of reps and I had to bail out from under the bar. And, um, you know, you're not talking to somebody who doesn't know how to get fat adapted. I do. I've, I'm a fucking pro. So you're not talking to somebody who's never tried it. Right. And I look at my training log from when I was, when I was lifting fasted back in 2020 and I was, my weight, my weight was going down. So the thing is, if you're going to sit on the couch and lose weight, then I see a reason to cut carbs and I see a reason to fast long. If you're going to build muscle, which you should, because over the long run, it is the only way to get off this dieting, fasting. I can't lose weight. Oh my God. Treadmill. You just make yourself a metabolic furnace. That's what I'm trying to do. That's why I'm putting on muscle. It's not so much about aesthetics. Like that can be nice. But for me, it is about making myself a metabolic furnace so that I don't have to do this for the rest of my life. Don't you want to stop? Like, don't you want to get to stop Googling? I mean, however you found me, how to rolling 72s, how to lose weight fast, how to look good for my brother's wedding, how to lose 40 pounds by summer, how to get rid of the FUPA. Whatever the thing is that you Googled that got you here, don't you want to never have to Google that shit again? Don't you want to be that person who's like, yeah, I'll eat some pizza? Muscle. 
if you don't do it, if you don't do it now, you'll just have to do it later. Or you're going to have to stay on this endless fucking diet cycle for the rest of your life. I went off personally. I'm tired of it. I've been dieting since I was like 10. That's why I'm gaining muscle. That's really the only reason. Um, so you want to be putting on muscle. You want to be running a strength training program. And you want to be using progressive overload, linear progression. Uh, you need to be lifting heavy. I recommend barbells. I use starting strength. There's other programs, but that's the one that I think is really, really good for beginners. And you I mean, it depends on who you talk to, but some people say you're a novice. It, it depends how long you'll be in the novice phase, but you want to be a novice because the novice, that's why they say newbie gains. Novices gain a lot of muscle. And I don't care if you've been going to the gym every day for two years. If you are new to actually running a legit strength program with linear progression, then you are a novice. Um, so uh, the other thing that you need to do is, so like I said, you need to be in a caloric deficit, but you need to be careful with it. You need to make sure that it's moderate. Now you might be wondering, how do I get into a caloric deficit? Well, you want to find your maintenance calories and you want to back off of them just a little bit. And then you have to ask, how do I find my maintenance calories? Well, that's the million dollar question, my friend, because you can find a million calculators that use a million formulas to find your maintenance calculator, your maintenance calories. And I have freaking looked at all of them, like all of them. Some of them, like the NIH body weight calculator, calculator, they use like your target body weight and your, how long you want to reach it. I don't really like that because I would rather, hey, Julie, I would rather, um, I don't care about hitting a certain weight at a certain time. And I don't think you should either. What I care about is, um, is, uh, yeah, so... Matt has an opinion about curl bars, but I disagree. I think you use barbells to train form with a barbell. And so that's what I would recommend. But so what was I talking about? Um, I forget. What was I saying? Someone type it and remind me what I was talking about. I said fasting is for sedentary people. Returning lifters. See, this is why I shouldn't read comments while I'm doing this. Um, so I'll move on to something else because I forgot what I was saying. Um, oh, yeah, I was talking about uh, maintenance calories. So basically, pick something and try it for two weeks and just see what happens. That's really the only way to find out your maintenance calories. Let's say that you decide that you're going to try 1,800 calories a day is and see what happens. And let's say that you um, are tracking your calories. And by the way, I don't think you need to obsessively track your macros that much. I think that if you're trying to <clears throat> recomp, I think a good thing to do is to hit your protein goal, which we'll talk about in a minute and hit your overall calories roughly. If you don't like to do that, then you can use hand portions, which that's what precision uses. And that's who's certifying me. So, um, they use like the palm of your hand for protein portion and a cup palm for carbs, one serving of carbs and a thumb, a thumb portion for fats. <clears throat> and that is perfectly cool. Um, if you don't like tracking everything, it's actually pretty freaking accurate. Um, so I think you hit protein, you hit calories. So let's say you try 1800, you put it in there every day, you, know, you track your food or whatever. <clears throat> or you just write it down using hand portions, whatever. And you do that for two weeks and you are like, lose, you lost in two weeks, you lost 12 pounds. Well, okay. Maybe that's a little low for you and you should probably go up because you can't, you're going to have trouble gaining a lot of muscle in a huge deficit. So you don't want a huge deficit like that. Um, but let's say that you do 1800 for um, two weeks and you, gained five pounds. Well, okay. You need to back it off just a little bit. If you do 1800 for two weeks and you maintained, um, I would say only go back like a hundred calories because keep in mind, if you're training really hard, you probably gained a little bit of muscle in that time. So back it off just a little bit. Okay. Um, so for your protein goals, I feel like you need to be getting at least a gram per pound of body weight. 
Uh, if you want to, you can use your target body weight, but I really think it's better to use your current. Uh, I don't know. Let's just put it this way. More protein is not bad. Contrary to what you've heard, uh, it's not going to damage your kidneys. If you already have some kind of serious kidney disease, then that's different. But if you don't have kidney disease, then you're fine. That's really a myth. Um, <clears throat> you don't want to go, let's say you don't want to go. I mean, there's actually studies. I was just reading about one where, um, actually, let me look it up really quick. It was crazy. It was like, um, there's a protein section. I'm on the macronutrients chapter. Um, and they talk about a study. Can you eat too much protein? Okay. So check this out. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. So Dwayne, the rock Johnson, <laughs> So this guy, Alan Aragon, I've been watching a lot of his videos. He's this older fellow who's been doing this for a long time. He's really cool. He wrote the book Flexible Dieting that I was talking about recently. Um, so uh, he eats, so a sample day of eating for the rock might include a, a 507 grams of protein. So one meal was an eight ounce steak. Um, 10 egg whites. I mean, dude, and he always has his protein shake at night, bro science, but there actually is, um, some real science behind the bro science of having a protein shot right before bed. Cause you, your body does all kinds of shit while you're sleeping, including protein, uh, muscle synthesis. So having like protein right before bed can be really good. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, hit your protein goal and hit your calorie goal. And the rest doesn't really matter that much, except depending on what your goals are. So like if your goal is athletic performance, then you're, you're probably going to want to not do like super low carb. Like I was talking about, you also, I don't think anybody needs to do crazy, crazy, like 30 grams a day, low fat. Unless, sorry, if you're one of those like tiny, tiny, like five foot tall women who's eating 1300 calories a day, which I'm so sorry for you. Um, then you might be really low in total fat, uh, absolute fat, but as a percentage, you know, um, for, for healthy hormone function, women need to have some fats. I think I read somewhere don't go below 90 grams, although I kind of do lately, but anyway, um, I should probably look into that some more. Actually, I did notice the other day I had like a little bit of hypoglycemia. And so I started adding a little bit of fat to my, there's some days where I have a lot of, I have a, a I'll have a protein shake for like lunch and it's not, I'm still getting a lot of like whole food protein sources. It's just that some days it's really convenient and works. Um, uh, so May says, I wish there was more female specific information. I've been trained side by side with my husband for a year now. It's definitely not the same for both of us. So why is this working? It'll have to be more specific. So like what is not the same for both of you? And maybe I can help. Um, <clears throat> so, um, hit your calories, hit your protein. And I think you should weigh yourself because it's a date, it's data. Data is knowledge and knowledge is power. However, you don't need to freak out about tiny fluctuations. Um, a few ounces or even you can, you can fluctuate like one to 2% of body weight a day. And that's, that's like normal, especially if you're eating carbohydrates because hydrate carbs, put water in you, um, a creatine, if you're supplementing with creatine, which I think you probably should, um, can cause water retention, but it's in the muscle. It's not like a, an inflammatory thing. It's a good, a good thing. Um, so I talked about why fasting is for sedentary people, right? Um, he had to work less hard and has more freedom in what he eats. So, um, yeah, I mean, bigger people are going to have more calories that they can run through. And men in general, because they just have more lean mass, are going to uh, probably gain easier and um, and lose body fat easier. It doesn't necessarily mean that women need to train super differently or that we need to have eat less protein or like... It just is what it is. And the fact is that you might just have to work harder. I mean, that's true for women in a lot of ways. It's not fair, but fair doesn't really exist in nature. Um, you know, and that's the thing that I'm trying to get to 
the more muscle you have, you know, the easier it gets to lift heavy shit and the more food you can eat. So, I mean, <laughs> um, and this is why I try not to compare myself to other people. And I understand where you're coming from and you're like, well, there needs to be female specific stuff. And by the way, you know, some good places to turn to for that content would be, I love Meg squats. I just discovered, okay. I'm not going to say I love her. I literally found her channel this morning when I was driving, uh, to work, but, uh, her video, um, on, uh, I wish we weren't always just given the same advice as men. Well, I mean, I don't know what other advice that I can give you. I mean, in some ways it's like, so the main thing that's going to be different is that, well, there are a few things. Your hormones are going to play a bigger role, which means that your strength can deviate with your cycle. Um, in the premenstrual uh, part of your cycle, your strength can suffer and maybe go back up during your cycle. You are going to crave food differently, retain water differently. Your weight's going to fluctuate differently. But again, I don't think it really changes so much what you do, except just to be aware of it. It's not like I can say, oh, well, you need to eat a different percentage you know, a different number of grams of protein per body weight. I don't think you do. I might change my, I haven't seen anything suggesting that. Um, and I guess maybe you could look at this one of two ways. You can be like, okay, it sucks because we don't get specific advice. Or you could say like, maybe we don't really super duper need specific advice. I mean, okay, there's, there's one place that I will say, like as you move into the immediate intermediate phase, and I'm not there yet. So this is just what I've <clears throat> gotten from watching, like, um, what's her name? You know, Koppel, Koppel, I don't know how to say her name. She's a starting strength coach and gym owner. She's in her 50s. And then, oh, what's the other chick's name? I think her name is Nikki. She's another starting strength coach. And they did a video together about, like, um, doing your threes as, as women. <clears throat> it has to do with motor neurons and how women don't recruit the same number of motor neurons as men. Um, and I don't remember the science behind it, but I do remember them saying that uh, triples at certain points in your training can be better for women than fives. Um, other than that, it's like, besides being aware, um, oh God, spam. Um, then I don't really know what to tell you besides don't compare yourself to men. Don't think about it. You know, like I was watching this girl rack pool this morning. I was watching girl. She's my age lady next to me at the gym, you know, and she, I don't remember how much it was. It was a lot. It was probably like two seventy five, And I remember feeling her just feeling like, Ugh. like, why won't my body do that? Well, I'm not there yet you know, but comparison is the thief of joy. And I know what you're saying about wanting more female specific recommendations. Maybe I'm just not good enough yet to know what they are, but so far I don't really know what they are besides like awareness of hormones, um, awareness that you gain body fat more easily. And it's supposed to be that way you're supposed to, um, cause we're supposed to get pregnant and be fertile and shit. And, um, awareness that, you know, you're, you're going to be a bit different from a man and like, who cares, not who cares, but, um, for me, like all I try to do is compete with myself and just do better than yesterday. Right. And I think, I mean, there were, there was a guy training like three thingies down from me today and he's in the Texas method. He's like, probably, you know, he's in, an intermediate lifter. And like, I can't think about what he does or how easy it seems for him. You know, he probably struggled to gain weight. It's just, everybody's different and you just have to try things, experiment on yourself and compete with yourself 
try to be stronger every day than you were the day, the day before and learn more every day than you did the day before. That's probably not helpful. And I'm not trying to be dismissive of what you're saying. Um, I just think that there is freedom and realizing that maybe we don't have to think of ourselves as super in, in need of markedly different um, training and nutrition advice from from men. I, I kind of don't think that we are besides understanding our hormone cycles and that we're going to be hungry at certain times of the month. We're going to gain weight at certain times of the month. We're going to want carbs more. You know, I do cycle carbs. I don't do it on purpose. I never plan to, but I do end up doing it because I'm just freaking starving at certain times of the month. Um, so um, going back to like the main idea, fasting, ketosis, all of these hardcore things are for sedentary people. And if you are a sedentary obese person, then maybe that is the route that you should go. But I would encourage you to, instead of going that route, to decide not to be sedentary. Because, you know, weight loss is what cures insulin resistance. Weight loss is what can reverse type 2 diabetes. Weight loss, fat loss, is what can improve a million different biomarkers for inflammation and improve your lip lipid profile. Um, and there are many different ways to get to weight loss. Some of them are sustainable and some of them are not. And unfortunately, I learned the hard way that long fasting um, is not sustainable eventually because you will lose all your muscle mass and you won't be able to keep it up. So I'm going to end this by talking about reverse dieting because um, it's kind of what I've been doing, although I didn't really do it on purpose. But because I had been fasting so hard for so long, um, <clears throat> I had to I had to build my calories back up. And what I'm finding now is that I went in a span of a couple of months from barely being able to maintain my weight on long fasts and very low calories to now losing weight eating 1800 calories a day. And the reason that that happens is that your bot, your metabolism responds, your metabolism is extremely adaptable and you're healthier when you have a lot of energy flux. So somebody who's fairly sedentary eating 2000 calories a day and maintaining their weight is not going to be as healthy as somebody who is active eating 3000 calories a day and maintaining their weight. Well, they're both maintaining their weight, what does it matter? Well, one of them has a lot of energy flux. And the reason why that's healthy and better is maybe the subject of a different video. And we would have to talk about mitochondria and, and ATP and a lot of other sciencey things. But basically, if you slowly, it, let's say that you're watching this, you're a woman and you are, you know, five to 120 pounds and you're eating 1200 calories a day and you can't seem to lose weight. Well, the answer might not be to keep cutting your calories because that's not working. Your body just adjusts and you have to cut it lower and your body adjusts and you cut it lower. The answer might be a reverse diet where you slowly bring your calories up and build some muscle. You start eating more and you need to make sure that you're obviously, I think, I feel like it goes without saying, but you want to be eating generally whole unprocessed foods, minimally processed. Everything is processed to an extent pretty much, but you're going to be eating generally whole, minimally processed foods and um, and doing some type of strength training. You do that and you start eating a little bit more. Your body adjusts to it and you can move it up a little bit more. Your body adjusts to it. And you can see, you know, um, different stories of women online who've done this and men. Um, and they're before and after pictures where and when picture, you know, she's, she looks good. She's skinny and whatever, pretty. And she's like 1300 calories a day. And then, you know, a year later she is, looks even better and she's eating 2,400 calories a day. And she, she may, might weigh a little more. She might weigh a little less, but she's clearly got more muscle, less fat. Um, the reason why this works is because of metabolic adaptation. As you cut your calories, your body responds to that by um, down regulating your um, your energy expenditure even in ways that you can't control like your purposeful exercise is a very small percentage of 
your total, total daily energy expenditure, which is made up of purposeful exercise uh, and um, purposeful exercise, your resting metabolic rate, your um, NEAT or non non exercise activity thermogenesis and the thermic effect of food that actually takes energy to digest your food and it takes more energy by far to digest protein than fats or carbohydrates which is one of the reasons why it's so satiating and why you should eat lots of it besides the fact that you need it to build and maintain muscle mass um so uh all of these make up your total daily energy expenditure your, there's a lot of that that is outside of your control in fact most of it is outside of your control and when you um when you uh, cut your calories, your body responds by cutting that, and there's nothing you can do about it. However, if you have a lot of muscle and you're using it and you're eating enough to use it, see, you see what I'm saying? No, I'm not going to flex my biceps. I don't have any yet. I mean, I have little, little ones. I'll flex them later when they're swole. I'm probably never going to get swole steps. You know, women don't really... It's so funny because people are like, oh, you're going to get bulky. And the thing is, as most of you know, men have to work hard to get bulky. Men have to sometimes take steroids to get bulky. Um, and women don't even have the testosterone that men have. So in general, um, in order for a woman to get bulky, it takes a lot, 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 a lot, lot, lot of a certain type of training. And often steroids who's juicing with me, JK. Um, so uh, when you increase your calories and increase your activity, your body responds to that as well. So um, we're adaptable. We're very adaptable. So if you are struggling because you can't seem to lose weight and you keep cutting your calories, I want you to know that like it's not hopeless. You just need to like rethink your approach. It might be that the time for, you know, the long fasting and ketosis is behind you and you need something that you can sustain. I was just watching um, or listening to a an interview with Don Lehman, who's a nutrition researcher, and he was saying, if you want to pick the thing that's going to, if you want to pick the thing that is statistically most likely to help you have a long-term body recomposition, like long-term fat loss, pick the thing that you could still be doing two years from now. And I think that's excellent advice. We all want to do it fast. And I understand why I've been there. I did it fast, but I made a lot of mistakes. And so if you decide to do it fast, I don't blame you because I did that. But I'm just telling you what I wish I knew and what I wish that I had done. Um, and I wish that I'd done it this way because I would, I would probably actually be in a better place right now. Because even though I lost it, a lot of it fast, I stalled out and I had a long plateau and I had to do a lot of like, journey through the darkness, dark night of the soul, searching to, um, to figure out like, oh, I can't be sedentary. I have to put on muscle and I can't just do cardio either. Let's talk about cardio really briefly. It's not like there's anything wrong with cardio. It's just that if you are in a, I'm trying to build muscle phase, then doing a lot of like chronic cardio is, is, is catabolic and it's going to break down muscle. So, um, I would recommend for conditioning. Well, what's the starting strength, uh, the main Mark Ripito's gym in Wichita Falls, they use the prowler, which used to be, I think it was originally used to train like football players. It's a, it's like the, the slide thingy that you, it's like a iron concrete, not concrete, Kristen, he used words it's a metal thing and you can stack plates on it, right? Barbell plates. And then you can either push it um, with the low bars, just Google it. It's called the prowler. And there's other sleds that you can push that are similar and, or you can put on a harness and drag them. The cool thing about, so this is more for like a high intensity, A, this is more for like a high intensity interval training type of um, conditioning, which is what I recommend other than uh, because you're going to commit less time and have less muscle breakdown. Does that make sense? Um, so by the way, Mark, 
I just saw your comment and I realized I forgot to send you those forms and I'm so sorry. It's been a really rough couple of weeks, you guys. I'll totally send them to you today. I promise. My bad. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the cool thing about the prowler, the sled, whatever, is that um, it doesn't have eccentric motion, which is the down. Like, so if you're doing a push up, the eccentric is the part where you go down. That's the part that makes you sore. And that you want to try to avoid eccentric motion in your conditioning, at least a lot of it, if you're also strength training, because you might be too sore to do your actual training. Um, so I think we've talked about everything that I want to talk about. Actually, we have it, but I'm going to stop there because it's been really long and um, I'm hungry. So uh, please leave me a comment if there is something that you want me to talk about my next live stream. Um, so just really quickly, as you've probably already been able to tell, I'm kind of adjusting the focus of the group to more like muscle strength training, et cetera, because, you know, again, it's not that especially very obese people can't face safely fast and do long-term fast. It's just that it's not ideal. And I would rather tell you what I wish I had done. And, you know, I'm just kind of taking you along on the journey. Um, I am 50% through with my precision nutrition certification. So probably in the next week or two, I will be a certified level one precision nutrition uh, coach, which is pretty dope. And I was kind of cynical about this program, but it's legit. I'm in unit two, which is nutrition science. And um the tests, the, the tests aren't hard. They're just multiple choice, but the, um, the, the workbook that you have to fill out is like really, um, it's pretty detailed. Here's an example of the question I was working on when I started this live stream and I was like, Oh shit, I gotta get on the live stream. When we eat and digest protein, we start with mostly secondary tertiary and quaternary forms of protein and food and end with mostly amino acids and cells Describe step-by-step step how this process happens. Include enzymes or hormones that change the structure of the proteins as they are processed. <sighs> like, doesn't that make you tired? But forcing myself to, um, I'm learning a lot. I am learning a lot, so it's good. Um, so that's happening. I got accepted to the MBA program, and so I'm working on my MBA, or will be soon. Um, I still want to one day get my MS in nutrition. It's just that they don't offer one at the university where I work. And so I'm getting a free MBA. Cool. Or almost free. And, you know, I also have a kid. I also have a full-time job. Actually, I'm doing two people's jobs at my job right now, which is great. And um, I'm also training three mornings a week. And I have a boyfriend. And I have, uh, occasionally I have to, like, bathe um, shave things, fucking go to the grocery store, breathe air, eat food. So I'm really busy and it's cool. And also I'm, I'm constantly watching videos and trying to learn stuff that, that I can share with you guys. Um, I'm reading, I just finished, um, the Barbell Prescription by Jonathan Sullivan, which I highly recommend. You need to read Starting Strength, the blue book, along with it. But especially if you're over 40, especially if you're over 40, I highly recommend Barbell Prescription. And honestly, if you're under 40, but especially if you're over 40. Look at this asshole laughing at me. Um, and I'm, I'm reading, uh, now I'm reading Flexible Dieting by Alan Aragon, which is it sounds like a diet book, but it's not. It's basically a textbook for uh, evidence-based nutrition. So I highly, highly recommend it. Um, videos I'm watching right now, Meg Squats, just found her. She's dope. Um, and um, pff, wow. And uh, let's see what else. Meg Squats, just ran a, Gabrielle Lyon is like, What's the female version of a douche? Is it a queef? She's kind of a queef. But I don't mean that in a mean way. She's just kind of like, she's a little bit extra for me, but she does know a lot of stuff. Um, and she has really good guests on. I've seen Alan Aragon, by the way. Okay, goal. 
Are you ready? Cool. I'm getting that dude on my sh channel, okay? Because I've seen this guy. He did an interview with a dude who had twat waffle. That's good. He had an interview. He was on a guy's channel with 77 subscribers. He literally will go on anybody's fucking channel. And he's the best. Um, so, yeah. He's like 50-something. And so it's like he has 30 years of experience. And he also is now doing the thing of staying jacked in his 50s, which I feel like is, I want to do that. You know, I want to get jacked. Not jacked, but like, I want to get, what's the girl version of jacked? But not like the, remember that wrestler from the 90s named China? Not like that. But, and also probably not like Meg Squats because she's amazing, but I really I don't think I want, I don't think I want to go that hard. You guys, I'm sorry. I'm not trying. I'm not body shaming her. She's incredible. Like, oh my God, the things that she does incredible. I just, I'm not ready for that level of swole. I don't think I ever will be. And that's okay. I might not even be capable of that. Right. So, um, she's a literally a, a, like a major competitive power lifter for seven years. So, um, I'm going to get Alan Aragon on here, you guys. I don't even know what I'm going to ask him. I'm not going to ask him the same thing everyone asks him because they're always like, what, what, how much protein is the right amount of protein? And how do you, who can, is it possible to gain muscle in this? Everybody asks them the same shit. And I'm going to ask him other shit. I don't know what it is yet. Like he gave up alcohol a while back. I might ask him about that because he quit drinking completely. Um, Okay, now I'm just rambling. Sorry. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Sorry that it took me so long to do this. <laughs> Why is that funny? Oh my God. Okay. I'm going for Bruce Lee level. You heard it here, folks. Bruce Lee. War Marvel. Okay. Some famous lady got to grab Bruce Lee. I love that. She got to grab Bruce Lee. I had a thing for his son. Big time. See, he's right behind me. Wait. You see him? Look, there he is. I'm going to pick his nose. <laughs> oh, God. I need to get back to work. All right. Love you guys. Sorry for the long hiatus. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Please comment. Tell me what you would like me to talk about. Um, what you would like to see on here. And um, I don't know. Share your dreams and journeys. If you want to be in my Patreon exclusive little club, it's patreon.com slash primal weight loss. Oh, real quick. I am rebranding. I'm changing the name of my business. My mascot is going to be like a deadlifting raccoon who's like really really fit and swole but also like still trashy you know what i mean because we're like keeping it feral or keeping it wild give me your ideas for like um my brand and the name and etc i want to hear them all right i'm gonna shut up bye guys